discrimination was this clear cut, you could speak against it far more. The bigger the fire, the better chance of being seen. But in a town of 90,000 spread out over 62 miles, it's harder to pin down. When it's hidden by ignorance or denial, it trumps, wink wink, any resistance. So we sat down to have an open discussion with Thompson River University students and staff in order to see where, as a community, we stand. And if we may be just too close to that fire. Definitely. So my name is Kaylee Duncan. I'm from the Salatin First Nation in Northern BC. I am a uh, fourth year student here at Thompson Rivers University. I'm majoring in communications. I currently work at the Integrated Planning and Effectiveness Office here at Tier U. I support Indigenous education and advancement. My name is Linda Daniluk. Um, I'm a sessional instructor at TRU, uh, predominantly teaching in the English and Modern Languages Department as well as the Journalism, Communication and New Media Department. Um, yeah, so my name is Trevor, uh, Trevor Jones. Um, I'm a fourth year student uh, in the Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies here at TRU. And uh, last year um, I had the privilege to be the president of the Adventure U Club um, for both the fall and winter semester, so I got to meet lots of cool people through that and um, get some really good experience as well. So my name is uh, Tim, at least I go by Tim. My full name is Tim Lodubar Bodori. I'm from Nigeria and right now I'm in my fourth year at TRU and I'm taking the Bachelor's of Business Administration program. I've been at TRU for two years because I transferred from uh, a college in Vancouver. So I've spent two years at TRU. Yes, my name is Melvin, Melvin Akimbele. I am a student of TRU. I'm currently studying psychology. Canada, of course there is. Yes, of course there is. We're seeing tons of it, and especially with this sort of new um, conservative radicalism. We're seeing synagogues being tagged and mosques being bombed and hijabs being ripped off. And yeah, absolutely. We have racism all across Canada and we've had it since the start because we are a colonial nation. So we came in conquering space from the indigenous people here. So yes, absolutely. There's racism in Canada. Um, there's maybe more blatant racism in um, other areas around the globe. Um, it's something that I think exists everywhere, absolutely, but um, it's maybe more so to, you know, how, how that is um, portrayed or how that is displayed. I 100% believe that racism exists in Canada. I think that um, there has been this um, portrayal of a mixing pot, not a melting pot, you know, in, in comparison to the United States. And I think that Canada is really, you know, advancing a lot more than, than the United States and like other countries around the world. But I think there's still a lot that needs to be done and a lot that isn't being um, spoken about and okay. talked about and addressed. Yes, absolutely. I believe it exists to a certain degree, probably less than other places, but I, yes, I definitely exist in Canada. Yeah, I do. It's not that it's a secrecy. I think your concept of awareness is what is, I think, really key there. I think there's a natural gravitation to be around people that we want to be around, to be around our friends, right, our friend groups. But within that, to be around people who, if, we're, if we don't have friends here yet, to be around people who at least know our culture, come from the same place. The intention was, we're all from the same town, we can talk about the same things, we can get together, we can come together. When it comes to some, I think, domestic students, I think sometimes it can be more overt I think that they can speak up more about their feelings of, I don't want to be in a group with those people. Again, is it coming from a complete awareness, I am being racist? Most likely not. I think most people who are having racist tendencies most likely don't realize how bad it is or that they are really presenting as, it's their experience, their worldview. Definitely there's, you know, when we talk about these ideas of like underlying um, racism, definitely. Um, there, 
you know, whether, whether the um, individual who's maybe portraying that is just ignorant to it and isn't aware um, or, you know, because, you know, in my own experience, personally, I haven't seen too much, you know, blatant outright racism. Yeah. But when we talk about this idea of maybe underlying ignorance, which um, can send maybe that message that I think that probably exists a little bit more so. Secretive, I would say to, to some degree, yes. Some people are definitely secretive about it because of the type of society that people think of Canada. And sometimes, yes, they might not be generally aware because it can be in a social group or in a social environment and someone says something. And if you think back, like, oh, what you actually said, it's kind of racist in a way and discriminatory. I think definitely when, especially the way I look, I, I'm fairly fair skinned and blonde hair, green eyes. Um, people don't assume that I'm of any indigenous or African-American descent. And sometimes that can um, alter people's perceptions of me and the way they speak to me so they can speak to me one like something like one day and say these racist thing racist things um, and just like assume you know that everybody around isn't going to be offended or anything you know like oh we're all white here whatever I can say this um, and then when I tell people like, hey, that was really racist, like, <clears throat> like this is, you know, this is who I am and I'm not like that at all. Um, it kind of takes people back. And one example that just happened to me recently, I was participating in one of the club activities here on campus and an international student from India came and spoke to me. I started talking about um, some indigenous uh, like movements that are happening recently and he was really interested in it and wanted to learn more about it and through that conversation I learned that students here at TRU told this international student to stay away from indigenous people. Towards me no not uh, peculiarly but from from for my friends yes I've definitely experienced things. Um, yeah, I mean, from my end of things, I think that, you know, the, the circles I surround myself with, even within TRU, are pretty, um, I like to think pretty inclusive. Um, I've definitely been in situations or circumstances where it's never really been any, like, blatant, outright, um, sort of attacking racist language or anything like that, but it's more so like what you talk about with that underlying sort of ignorance. Um, where people are just kind of uh, speaking in the way they, you know, have learned or maybe are comfortable with. Um, I've not been around the world to know about, you know, being people being secreted of people being open about being racist. You know, Canada is the first place that I've stayed for a very long time. I mean, I've been to England, Peru, and other countries, you know, I might just go there for a visit or tourism. Um, but in Canada, I've been here for like quite a long, for a long time now. And, you know, anybody that is found to, you know, make discriminative comments or racist comments towards you, you're allowed to, you know, persecute them. And they could do jail time or, you know, they could pay a certain fine for those remarks. So with that law being being put to place, people are now being more secretive or people would make such comments and, you know, just say they're joking with you. You understand? When in fact they're not joking with you, when in fact they mean what they're saying to you. I think it's unintentional in that I think people aren't always aware of how racist they're being. People kind of figuring out the world and not being able to express it. However, however, again, I do think that there is um, Kamloops itself and our surrounding areas does have quite a small town mentality still. It's a growing cityscape. Um, we have 90,000 people. We're definitely not a small town, but we're not a big city. So we're a growing cityscape and we're getting more amenities. We're getting more young people, young working um, people coming in, especially with Vancouver becoming so expensive. We're starting to see that overflow here. Um, we're having more arts, we're having more, and arts, media, film, the things that you're doing is so crucial to breaking down racial barriers 
And so we're getting more of it slowly. TRU is growing. That brings in more international students, which then brings in more opportunities. I think that people are aware that they might have some... I, I do believe it's truly unintentional on many parts. But then I do think that there are students who are like, I don't like this group of people, and I'm going to hang out with my group of people, and I'm going to talk about that other group of people negatively yeah. while I'm in the safety of my own group of people. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I think, I think it's probably a little bit of both. Um, you know, and it kind of goes back to this, if, if we're talking about sort of like the language um, aspect of it and, and the way you speak, like people, people don't like change, right? And so when you've kind of been doing things or you've learned to do things a certain way growing up um, and you come to a setting that might, you know, require you to think a little bit more about the language you use, it's you know, it, it can feel like something that um, people don't want to have to think about, right? Well, history, like the way things have happened, like from the past, how, when, if it's either slavery or if it's either lack of information, I think that history, the fact that it builds up and it's hard to diminish, that sense of superiority in a way or the sense of being better than someone. It's been passed down generation to generation and sometimes it can fade away because people do learn. Just like you can learn to hate certain factors of people, you can learn to actually know what is right or wrong, at least in that sense. But I think because it's been passed down for so long, so many generations, and it's still being taught in certain forms. Again, it's not direct. It's hard to like, it's hard to fade away. It's hard to actually get rid of it. Racism occurs when people tend to have the belief that they are superior than other people based on the color of the skin, based on you know education, based on uh, status based on wealth, based on health. So as long as people have that feeling of superiority, I feel like uh, racism is still going to be a thing or discrimination is still going to be a thing. TRU is, we have places like the Gathering Place and I think the indigenization of academia is is starting here but I think it really needs to advance um, you know every little thing that we do to support indigenous students here on campus is awesome but it's really just about creating a safe place where you know people of different cultures um, can express themselves and and aren't just forced to be one way and I think it's very typecast and stereocast in this like um, especially in Kamloops that it's the indigenous people that are downtown or on the North Shore. We don't have the same kind of university culture that I think a space like UBC or other places might have where you have a lot of student um, integration. There's still racism in those schools as well but because we don't have a ton of uh, student activities that are just prevalent we're not really mixing. So we are a school that also has a, a big international student population. We have our domestic students. We have domestic students from different areas of Canada. We have Indigenous students specifically. And yes, there is racism here. There are also wonderful moments, and I, I need to say that, that there are wonderful moments too of students connecting and students coming together. I think it's going in a better direction because more of these things, even though they're hidden and secretive, they could be exposed at a larger, at a, in a larger effect with social media and things like that. But for theory specifically, again, it's it's not that talked about. It's not that widespread. It's just there. So I feel like in general, it's it's getting better. But for TRU so far, it's not as fast and it's still a bit stagnant. Because yeah, will we have an incident on our campus? Yes, I think, I think we could. We're in a situation where Canada itself is becoming more um, conservative uh, in many factions. And that sort of Trumpism type of conservative, 
which is scary to see in our country. Um, and we have a situation where we're not necessarily talking about the racism on our campus. So if you don't talk about it and you just keep boiling the pot and nobody says, hey, that pot seems to be kind of boiling up a little bit. At some point it's boiling, at some point, it's boiling over. You know, if nobody says anything and we all just kind of watch it in like fascinated horror until it boils over, then we're sort of in trouble at that point. I think it's getting better. I guess trying to educate people in a way and not in a way like to tell them what is right or wrong because you, can, you can't just tell a person what is right or wrong. They have to know why it is right or wrong. What, or they have to know the background, like the damage it can cause, the consequences of what the, or the actions can cause. So yeah, through education, and I know there isn't a perfect way to technically address this because when people are entitled to their rights and opinion, it's totally fair. But like trying to educate people to get to forget people to empathize with all what others who are being discriminated against should feel. How they feel what they go through every day and basically how it affects their life. Yeah, definitely well I mean that's one of the things that the club is sort of built on is this idea of you know, it's not exclusive. It's for anybody who's interested in, you know, sort of the, the core principles of getting outside, meeting people, whatever. So, you know, I mean, from that um, that side of it, I think there's less of that that I've experienced through the club because it draws on a certain type of person, right? Diversity is the thing we see in most Northern, country, northern countries, in North America, there's loads of diversity. Europe, there's loads of diversity. And in theory here, we have the people of different uh, ethnic backgrounds. So I feel like running workshops on how, on working and associating with people of color, you know, running workshops and like letting people know that uh, there's certain words you can't say to people of color, there's certain words that are, uh, that are derogatory in to a person to another person. Something that might be funny to you might not be fun, funny to the next person. You understand? You know, just like keeping people informed that, that these issues still exist. You understand? Um, uh, Canada is a very nice country. You know, it's not it's not as worse as the U.S. You understand? So it's not as worse as the U.S. So it's kind of like. They would, make a, they would make a generalization like there's no racism in Canada, but there is racism in Canada. And until we, until we start, you know, admitting to that fact, you know, and not denying that people in Canada are not racist, you know, it's still going to be an issue. So like, you only solve a problem when you know there's a problem. we're getting better but but from an educational standpoint we're doing it or um, if we're if we have all our international students trying to bring in some international content um, can really help to make connection and to connect people to your lesson plans and we're we're not doing it all the time then that spreads into the student population again we have things like I days which celebrates lots of different culture comes up once in winter semester so where's all of our other events where we can bring people together to talk about Indigenous issues, um, which is fantastic not only for Canadian students to, to discuss those hard issues, but for international students to understand our Indigenous situation yeah. and to involve international students in meeting other students from a variety of nations and our Canadian students. I don't feel we have enough going on to make those connections. So even just educating all of our students as to appropriate uses of language for a number of situations on our campus would be really good. It would make them more informed so we wouldn't have this unintentionality. Um, adopt something where it's not just, hey, we're making these programs for um, Indigenous students. It's like, hey, we're making these programs for everyone else so they can understand. And then that those two cultures, all of the cultures, can come together 
work together and understand the differences. You know, you're not gonna understand the needs of different individuals in, in different cultures unless you actually ask them what their, their needs are. This is a heavy topic, and the responses today can only start this discussion in order for the beginning clips that we saw today to become non-existent. And hopefully TRU takes these, for legal reasons, opinions, and takes them with a grain of salt and a little grace. Because in a world that is literally burning, the least we can do is accept one another as we look, dress, or present ourselves. And in a world where we can almost reach the stars, is that really too much to ask? Well, is it? Snip, snip. Thank you.